Okay, the next problem on our list here is S41. S41 asks us to look at actual financial statements again. It says refer to the financial statements for Home Depot in Appendix A, which you can also get online, and then answer the following questions. In order to find the, uh, the financial statements online, just go to the student edition right here. You can see where I'm moving my cursor here. This is the student edition of the book website. It's free, it's not connect, it's just the student edition. When you get there, if you click on the Home Depot 2011, you also have Lowe's financial statements down here, but if you click on Home Depot 2011, that will take you to this PDF file, which I've already clicked on. Um, if you hold down control and click on it, it'll open it in a new tab and we're brought to what essentially is Appendix A here, as you can see at the top, um, but shows the financial statements of Home Depot. The first question asks us, how much did the Home Depot owe for salaries and related expenses at January 30th, 2011? Was this an increase or decrease from the previous year? The first thing that I want you to do is um, understand that they're asking how much Home Depot owes. When you think about the word owes, think about the word obligation. And when when you think about obligation, think about a liability. Remember, the equation for the balance sheet is assets equal liabilities plus stockholders' equity. If we're asking how much an individual owes or an entity owes, then we're talking about an obligation, which is a liability. And so we're going to go to the balance sheet in order to find this number. If we scroll down here, or I'm going to grab the bar here, scroll down to... right here. We get to the consolidated balance sheets for Home Depot. It asks us how much we owe, so we're going to the liability section. And then the question was how much do we owe for salaries and related expenses? Go down the second line under here, under current liabilities, we get salaries and related expenses, and we get 1.29 million, okay? And notice that this is for January 2011. And then the question asks us how much for 2011. So if we go down here, we can see that compared to prior years, so 2010, we had 1.263, so 1.29 is obviously an increase, so we get letter A. Letter A is our first answer, 1.29 million. One thing I want to point out real quickly, notice that we're under the current liability section here, okay? The reason why we're under current liabilities is because these are talking about wages and wages if you work for a company you're going to be expected to pay be paid relatively soon um, less than a year for sure and current liabilities the definition was that the obligation would come due or have to be paid um, within less than a year less than 12 months and that's why this uh, line item is under the current liability section of the balance sheet Okay, the second question says, refer to the revenues note in the summary of significant accounting policies that follows Home Depot statements of cash flows. How does the company account for customer payments received in advance of providing services? In this problem, we're asked to go to the portion of the financial statements that's after the numbers. If we were to scroll down until we get to the notes, these are called the notes to consolidated financial statements. This is all the information that you can't fit inside the numbers, but that the user of the financial statement needs in order to correctly interpret the numbers, okay? These are all the details behind the numbers that um, were too much detail to fit into the actual quantitative financial statements, but still that we like to provide the user in case they need this detail in order to make decisions about the business. So we're asked to scroll down to the revenue section of these notes, right? So here we're starting the notes, but we're looking for the revenue section. So we don't see it here. Here, keep going. It's not on this one. Keep scrolling down. Here. At the top of here, we can see that we're at the revenue section. And the question specifically asks us, how does the company account for customer payments received in advance? So if we start to read through here, we get to this line item that says, when the company receives payment from customers before the customer has taken possession of the merchandise or the service has been performed, the amount received is recorded as a deferred revenue in the balance sheet until the sell or service is complete. So if we look at that and we scroll down to D, letter D says the revenue is deferred until the goods or services are provided to the customer. We have our answer. One real um, quick uh, 
kind of tie I want to bring to the words that we've been using in class. When we indicate that cash is provided before service or goods are provided, meaning that the revenue is earned, we state that we had an unearned revenue. Unearned revenue was an obligation, it was a liability. What is that obligation? The obligation is to perform the service or deliver the goods, right? Well, I want to, I want to make sure that you guys understand that unearned revenue is synonymous with deferred revenue. Um, deferred revenue means that we've deferred recognizing the revenue. We've postponed recognizing the revenue until we've actually earned it. In that sense, um, when you think about the adjusting journal entries, and you have two different types, deferrals and accruals, remember that unearned revenue, to modify unearned revenue, it is a deferral adjustment, right? Deferral adjustment, the defining characteristic was that we have made a previous journal entry that has deferred an item to the balance sheet, either an expense or a revenue. So understand that unearned revenue and deferred revenue are essentially synonymous, the same thing. And that we can see that link between unearned revenue and deferred revenue by understanding that to adjust unearned revenue for an adjusting journal entry, we have to do a deferral journal entry. Okay, And noticing the deferral being the root word of deferred. All right. Okay, the last problem says, what adjusting journal entry must the Home Depot make when it provides services paid by a gift card? Well, this one has been pretty familiar with us. Uh, we've kind of learned this ever since chapters two or three. Um, but the answer is B, we would debit unearned revenue, credit service revenue, unearned revenue being an obligation, a liability. When we debit a liability, we are decreasing that liability and crediting service revenue, service revenue being that we've earned, we've actually earned the revenue because we've then provided the service. So, answers to the questions um, one through three should now be clear. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to let me know. Again, you can access these financial statements on the book website, the student version, uh, just by going and clicking on the Home Depot 2011 annual report. Thanks.